Our proposed legislation requires the posting of calorie information for standard food and beverage items, including alcohol. It requires food service premises to post a contextual statement that would help educate, um, educate patrons about their daily caloric requirements. And it would authorize public health inspectors to enforce, enforce these requirements. Or divorce them or remarry them. <laughs> I always get the impression, and I've never met her, but she doesn't, I don't think I've met her, that she doesn't actually know what she's saying. And I, look, I don't mean this to be rude, because I, I could lose 20 pounds easy, but she's heavy. And it, it, it is slightly jarring when you see someone who has a, obviously a weight issue talking about the need for the government to tell you how many calories are involved in it, all the food you eat. I think that's the role of, of parents to make sure their kids are healthy and the role of the individual to make sure that we are, they are, are healthy. David Menzies is healthy physically, emotionally, mentally is another <laughs> issue. David, you have food. Oh, you know, all this talk about food is just, you know, I've got the raspberry cobbler. Uh, absolutely. I've got the duchy for you. As my Jamaican friends say, Michael, pass the duchy on the left-hand side, man. Yep. Right? There you, you go. A bit of Rob Ford there. <laughs> so, tell, tell us what this is all about. What's being proposed well, here first while of all, I eat? I, and I do mean to be rude. Why is it that whenever I'm being oh, lectured my. about weight... Golly, that's good. Yeah. You know why it's good? Because mm. it's bad for you. Mm. Anyways, I digress. But why is it every time I'm being lectured about what to eat and nutrition? nutrition and calorie counting, whether it's Libby Davies or Deb Matthews, it is a fat mm. woman politician. That's no who, fat. I'm, Heavy. No, sorry. Big it's bones. fat. I bet you if we did Rubenesque. the caliper test, I'm telling you, brother, mm. less sexy Alexi and more large Marge. You know what I'm saying? Mm. But yeah. you know what? I agree. <laughs> Hurry on. <laughs> Listen, why not, since this is such a toxic substance mm. for us, junk food and sweets and what have you, Michael, when you think about it, why doesn't the nanny state go all in, as they say in Vegas? We have the government running the liquor uh, stores in this province. Yep. We have them running casinos. We have them running the, uh, the, the lotteries. So why don't we have food service outlets mandated by the government? Because they know best. Well, that's not going to happen. Oh, yeah, it's not going to happen because, you know, they couldn't, you know, uh, you know sell a, star a steak to a starving man with their, with their inefficiencies. I want to eat some more of this. OK, but um, it's pretty difficult. So let's have another clip. I, I, I <laughs> give you my word, during the clip, I will not consume any more of this food. <laughs> we want to ensure that families have easily accessible and transparent nutrition information when they buy pre prepared food, because we know that when parents have this information, they're more likely to make healthier choices. I lied. Um, no. <laughs> Isn't this delicious, though? You know, I mean, I know, the subject. I know this eat. is give me a heart, a heart attack, but you know, Michael, mm, that's one good donut. It's worth dying of a heart attack for this. <laughs> Seriously, though, um, children, if they have a weight issue, any responsible parent should make sure, deal with that, get them playing sport, enjoying running around, cycling or whatever. Yeah. But the, the notion of government dictating and then fining people, I mean, restaurants have enough of a challenge staying open. The fines are quite heavy, aren't they? Yes, um, five thousand dollars. Five thousand dollars <laughs> for that? the first. Well, I said the fines are quite heavy, as is the minister. Yeah, well, yeah. no, uh, touche. Uh, five thousand dollars for the first time. Ten thousand times. Five thousand. Yeah, ten thousand dollars every time after that. By what do they call that? That public health officer. I, I have this envision of RoboCop for the fast food set <laughs> walking around. And who around. comes under this? Is it is it every restaurant or just fast food? Well, you know what? This is an excellent question, Michael. It's evidently uh, chains. I believe the benchmark number is 20 and higher so think about this if this is a health issue and by the way the vast majority of food service outlets in Canada are independents mm. but if this is a health issue then what does money have to do with it why aren't you going after you know the Olympus uh, restaurant uh, on uh, Princess Street home of the Menzoid Deluxe I actually have a sandwich named after me that's Michael. a really grotesque yeah. notion you have a sandwich named I, after I do it, it, it's like a club sandwich with hero's meat on it right and much mm. better than a survival and a lot of ham bun. no doubt <laughs> how dare you <laughs> but I mean you know what I'm saying why are why are the uh, independents uh, getting a free pass and and I'll tell you what the answer is once they enforce it with the chains then the next little bureaucratic uh, bureaucratic exercise in nanny statism will be to go after the independents. You know, the, 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 the best way to guarantee the health of children, physical, emotional, psychological health, is strong families. 
It's very difficult to hold a family together when you have to have both people out working because taxes are so high and it's so difficult to live. The Liberal government has never been a friend of, of the family. It's been an enemy in many ways of the traditional family. And now they're saying, but we'll take over. And, you know, you hear this, for example, from inner city black communities. Yep. In the, you speak to their leadership and they will say, there were always challenges of racism, discrimination, but strong family structure, strong faith communities held us together. Then you have the Democrats coming in saying, no, no, the state will take over. Dad disappears. <laughs> I mean, it's a serious issue. So the, the role of father is not necessary because the state will provide. And what is being said here is, mom, dad, you don't have to worry about it. Not personal responsibility or self-sufficiency. The government will tell you that makes you fact that, look, if anyone really thinks eating that does not put on weight, yeah. They deserve to be fat. But, but Michael, Frank, one quick point. The state doesn't provide it. It's the opposite. There's a lot of buzz about putting taxes on yeah. fast food, much as they tax tobacco uh, out David, of, you know. David, we, we, we have to pray. Thank you very much indeed. Oh, well, here. Cheers. I'm just one. I'll wrap